Good morning. Thank you, Nancy and Scott, for the solo beautiful music this morning. Today's scripture is from the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 16 through 19 and 25 through 30. Jesus praises John the Baptist. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. Jesus thanks his Father. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father that chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. May God add his blessing to the reading of this scripture this morning. Will you join me in the spirit of prayer? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, today's scripture is one of the most famous, right? At least that last part. You've probably heard it a hundred times. It's a slogan. It's repeated, it's easy to memorize, right? Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my burden is easy. No, and my, my burden is light. I know it's in there, right? You've probably heard it. You can recite it in some version like that. Now, I have to confess, I heard it from the time I was a kid. Anyone else hear it from the time you were a kid? You heard it in Sunday school. You heard it in VBS, you heard it in children's moments, you heard it when you were real little, right? My yoke is easy and my burden is light. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Take my yoke upon you. Well, I thought for a really long time that it was egg yolk, right? Anyone else think that? And I thought, okay, yeah, so God's not like a hard-boiled egg, and all hard and crumbly in there, God's like an over-easy egg, right? Oh, like so soft and delicious, like the best kind. Anyone else think that? And I thought, okay, this is telling us something about God. God is, God's easygoing, delicious, wonderful, until you start reading the scripture and it's not that kind of yoke, right? It's this kind of yoke. And it's Confusing because Jesus is always teaching in agricultural references and farming imagery and metaphors. And that made a lot of sense for the people that he was teaching and walking with at the time of his teaching and ministry because they were agricultural farmers and people who worked in rural settings. So they would know immediately when he's talking about metaphors or parables that have to do with planting or the harvest or that have to do with equipment that help livestock get around, but for us, the first thing we think of probably is an egg yolk, right? I mean, anybody else 
Anybody else? But it's really this device of sharing a burden where two animals have their necks through a yoke. And that means they're carrying a burden together. So now that we've got that settled, let's talk a little bit about what this scripture means. We all know the ending part. I could see some of your nervous faces at the beginning part because it's very abstract and sort of harsh and heady and it's not really the kind of scripture you want to hear on a sunny Sunday in the summer, right? It's a little heavier than that. But this scripture is from the Gospel of Matthew and we've been in the Gospel of Matthew for a few weeks. We've been in that place where Jesus has been calling his disciples by name. He names all 12 and invites them to come with him and to start their ministry. And he's telling them after the Sermon on the Mount what they're going to also do. You're going to heal the sick and raise the dead and preach to the masses and feed those who are hungry and shelter those who are shelterless. And there's a lot to do. Anyone else feel like there's just a lot to do in the world? There still is. Those old disciples didn't fix it. There's still a lot to do. Last week, we had a guest from the Refuge of Hope come to speak, and she was talking about the homeless population in Stark County. She was talking about how there are people without homes and without shelter here, our neighbors, right here in Stark County. Not some faraway place, not some impoverished nation. Right here in Stark County, there are people without homes. We decorated 168 placemats to cover one meal where homeless men and women and children can come and receive something warm and sit at a table with a placemat made by all of you that says something like, keep hope or have faith or be brave or you're loved. But the placemats aren't going to fix it and all those underwear donations aren't going to fix it because there's still a lot of burdens today, right? So not just the homeless population, but there's a lot to do and a lot to worry about and a lot of heavy burdens. This Sunday, when I started the prayer time, I had five that I had to tell you about before I could hear from you. People we've known for years. People we've known who've served you communion and passed you the offering plate, who've said prayers at this altar, who've sponsored our youth in our baptism class, who've taught our Sunday school, these people, people we know and love, people who've been faithful their whole lives, and they're facing heavy burdens, right? It really doesn't seem fair that Sharon Madison, who is one of our most faithful deacons who calls her shepherd team every single month, writes cards, and visits our homebound members. She has done that so faithfully. The first thing she told me when she started her cancer treatment is, who is going to visit my people when I can't? It really doesn't seem fair that she's had a year of fighting cancer, does it? And then Vern, who doesn't miss a Sunday, the first thing he said when I visited him in the hospital after his car accident was, what was Sunday like? I'm sorry I missed it. Fern comes to church every single Sunday, and every single day of the week, rain or shine or snow, he visits his wife Rita's grave every day. In and out of delirium at the hospital over the last few days, he has asked his daughter Nancy, did you visit Rita's grave today? I don't want her to be alone. These are faithful, loving people who've lived their lives trying to do what's right, trying to shine God's light and love in the world. You know these people. Sam Bacon, he's in the nursing home. He came up to me my first Sunday here 10 years ago, and he said, I'm Sam Bacon, and I'll be your elder chair, anything you need. These are faithful people that we've been praying for. For weeks and weeks, Lee, we've been praying for your daughter. Faithful people praying for Missy. Can she be healed? Can there be an answer? And she's still in pain. There's a lot to do, isn't there? There's a lot of heavy burdens. And sometimes as faithful people, we think, well, if we come to church every single Sunday and we serve as elder chairs and we're prayed for every single 
Sunday when we gather and we show up and we dust off our wife's grave and we're good people. Shouldn't it all work out? And sometimes the scripture we heard today is used that way. Like an, evangel an evangelism tool, right? Oh, you know what? Come on over, be a Christian, and my yoke is easy, my burden is light. It'll be great. Have you ever heard it used that way? Like an evangelism tool? Like, hey, if you're going to come on over to church, be a Christian, it's going to be easy. Anyone ever heard that? No one's ever heard that? Raise your hand if you've heard that. Okay, some of you have heard that. Well, good for you that you haven't, but it's used that way as this evangelism tool. You know what? Come on over to the Christian life. It's going to be easy. God's got you. You're going to pray, and things are going to work out, and life is going to be perfect. Your burdens will be lifted. But to think about this scripture that way is to totally misunderstand what Jesus is doing. As people who've been studying the Gospel of Matthew, we know that he's been preaching the Sermon on the Mount, he's been healing people, he's been calling his disciples and about to send them all out into the world to partner with him, to do the work with him. And he starts this scripture complaining a little bit. He says, you know, there were flutes playing and you didn't dance. What he's talking about is as a community, you weren't coming together, you were too busy dividing and being against each other. There were harps playing and you didn't mourn. You didn't dance, you didn't mourn. You didn't do the work of being in community together, of coming alongside one another. You got John the Baptist in your midst and all you can think about is, is he a demon? You have Jesus in your midst and all you can think about is, is he a drunkard? Jesus is starting out with some warnings about the worst thing we can do as a community. We start judging one another, we're afraid to dance, we're afraid to mourn, we're afraid to be a community together, we're dividing and separating. And he's sending his disciples out in the scripture, and this message is for them specifically. You saw what that yoke looks like, right? That's not for undomesticated wild animals that are all of a sudden going to come and put that on. This is a, an agreed upon arrangement. We're walking together in this domestic yoke, right? Jesus is talking to his disciples who've already said, we're going to do this work together, and he's teaching them what that looks like. He's preparing them for the hard things. This is one of his last teachings before they go out to do the healing and the teaching and the raising of the dead and the comforting of the sick and the finding of the shelter and the praying for Sharon, who has cancer, and the praying for Vern, who's recovering from a car wreck. He's preparing people who are right on the threshold of going out and doing the things that we're still doing today. He's preparing people for the 168 placemats that they need to decorate and for the underwear they need to collect for the homeless shelter and for the hard things that keep on coming, the burdens of all the prayer requests that we started our service with. He's preparing his followers for this by saying, the world is hard. You already know this. We're going to walk through it together, side by side, and I'll carry the burden with you. The scripture today isn't about, hey, come on over to Christianity, it's going to be so easy, no more burdens. Instead, it's here we all are together, agreeing to serve together, and it's going to be hard, but I'm carrying it with you. That's what a yoke is about. I'm carrying it with you, and you don't do it alone. But Jesus isn't just talking about himself carrying burdens with us. At the beginning, he is saying, you have to dance together and mourn together, and make placemats together, and pray for Sharon and Vern and Sam together. You have to come together and be a community and figure that stuff out. Don't worry about who's drunk or who has a demon or who has other problems that you don't understand. What you have to do is walk together and carry the burdens together. That's what it looks like to do God's ministry. So when we come to this scripture today, it's not something we're going to put out on our sign and promise to everyone in North Canton that it's going to be easy. They should just come on into this church and it'll be sorted out. Instead, it's a promise to one another that we're walking together, yoked, all of us. We're carrying these burdens together, the ones we prayed about, the ones that were unspoken, the hardships we hear about among our neighbors, and we're serving together. Because when we carry it together, the load is lighter and God carries it with us. Amen.